Hey everybody, welcome to the Game Facts Podcast. My name is Brian, I'm here with Andrew, and we have a couple special guests on our show today. We have the guys from Team Meet, we have Edmund and Tommy. Guys, say hello. 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 And uh, they're here on the show with us today to talk about Super Meat Boy and indie game The Movie. Um, guys, first question I want to ask is, what, what got both of you guys um, interested in the video game industry? Uh, let's go ahead and start with Edmund. Edmund, what got what what got you in, interested in actually doing video games? I would say the women. The women, <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's a good answer. The, the abundance of women. Hey, he says that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same reason every, every 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 little boy wants to be a game designer. The women. The women. Uh, exactly. The abundance of women. <laughs> and the, and the praise and the they just throw themselves at you. Of course. <laughs> you, you don't even know. Like sometimes I walk in and Tommy's programming and there's just women's panties all over him. <laughs> walking by. And... <laughs> the reason is I buy them in bulk off. The <laughs> it's a creative problem. influence. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, why, why did I get in? Why did I make games? Is that? The... Yeah. Yeah. Why did you get into games? It's a natural progression. Like I, I was always like driven by independent creative endeavors, and um. And I, I, I found out about, I didn't, it wasn't called indie games then. It was just online games or flash games or whatever. And mm-hmm. around the around the same time, Tommy probably found out about it. I mean, Tommy was programming long before I even considered doing anything game-wise. But mm-hmm. I'll tell you about that. Okay. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just, you know, went from making comics to making mods for games and making levels for games then to like doing interactive flash stuff then teaming up with a programmer and making like my first little flash game and eventually you know working um with with a company called chronic logic making gish being turned on to the independent games festival and learning about this whole you know underground scene that was quite tiny in like 2003 mm-hmm. so yeah i think there were the third or fourth IGF in existence. Right. And from there, it was winning the IGF and making games and basically feeling like it was something that I could do, you know, that I felt like I had a voice in. That was basically it. That's Tommy, what awesome. about you? What, what, what got you into, into making, you know, being a programmer for games? Um, I, I just liked programming. Uh, I started programming when I was 11, and... I tried to make little games and stuff like that. Mainly, uh, I just tried to make AI stuff, which is odd. Uh. Um, but I liked it, and I played a whole bunch of video games. And what what kid doesn't want to make video games? That's that's the better yeah, question. True. That's very true. Yeah, I mean, I know Except that jocks jocks don't like to <laughs> make video games. That's true. That's true. Okay. And. I've got I've got a question here which I feel would be a crime not to ask. Um, how did you two first meet? I expect a really romantic story with plenty of explosions. J- uh, it was J date. J date. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a Craigslist ad ad for um, I want to be humiliated in public when I wet myself and. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I can do that for you. Yeah. That Tom, nice. Tom, Tommy and I didn't meet. In person until 2009, right? Okay. No, 2000, uh, 2008. Yeah. Oh, wow. 2008. Um, and but we knew of each other and we both linked each other on our websites. Like we were both associated with the Newgrounds Network. Uh huh. And um, we both had made weird games. It's pretty. It's pretty funny to look back. We kind of had similar themes in our work. Like he had like nail Jesus to the cross and bitch hunt. We both liked. <laughs> Violent things, religious things, and yeah. and uh, yeah, had dead baby dress up and a bunch of other weird shit. But um, <laughs> <laughs> and we knew we knew of each other. Um, I knew him as Tommyanism. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then I, around that time, I guess you were you had entered Goo, right, Tommy? Yeah, I entered this game I made called Goo into the IGF, and I got nominated for technical excellence and I was looking through past winners and I saw the Gish one and I'm like, oh, I know that man. That's uh, that's a man I know. <laughs> I, know <that. laughs> I know that guy. 
That's great. That's great. But when I, when I actually met him, though, he was, like, losing his mind. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, like, clutching, he was clutching this little this little clear baggie of, like, of, um, of jelly. Was, uh, jelly. <laughs> yeah. And he was, like, popping them, like, pills. Like, ah! And I was, like, What's going on? He's like, I'm diabetic. I'm diabetic. My, my blood yes. sugar. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, so my blood sugar is dropping rapidly. <laughs> and that was that was essentially every day for then on. That's tell me. Yeah, but to this day, <laughs> he's always clutching a little, a little baggie of jelly beans, <laughs> frantic, telling everybody he's diabetic. The jelly bean saved his life. Yes. <laughs> he, died, he died many times that night. Yeah. I'm I'm undead. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, question, what are some of you guys', um, especially for Super Meat Boy, what was some of your influences for making Super Meat Boy? Like, what inspired you, um, more like, well, to make I mean, the make... obvious big one is Mario. Yeah, yeah, that's, definitely I mean, can see that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, the, the easiest way to, like, blanket it is, like, all, like, the good games from the early 90s, like the games that Tommy and I grew up with. Mm -hmm. the, those, those games, I think, had, were, like, the key to... The inspiration behind it and then even then more like later on i would say for me a lot of independent games and a lot of independent platformers and stuff um from you know the, the mid 2000s on um also were quite inspirational but it was in a lot it was just like a pretty simple take on how can we take mario and make it ours yeah uh -huh. like and make it make it current and like you know, think critically about it, and it was kind of like a taboo. Like we never, we never ever said that publicly. We never said we were going to attempt to take Mario and try to like improve on it because it's like mm -hmm. the most taboo thing you could say. Yeah, but in absolutely. reality, that's, mm -hmm. that's what we what we were trying to do. Like we 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 wanted to do that, and we wanted to like make it about our experience with video games. And you did, that's, and you did an yeah. excellent I, job. I just want to be <laughs> recognized on the internet. Who doesn't? What? <laughs> I just wanted to be on the internet, <laughs> recognized by everybody. He was just in it yeah. for he was just in it for the women, so that's you, you need but to nothing, make, There's nothing wrong with that at all. You need to make yeah. a channel of um, let's plays, and all that will be on there is I want to be the guy let's plays and Call of Duty commentaries, and you'll be good to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all the women of the internet. There you go. False. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we've got a rather cliche question, I guess. Uh, what are your guys' favorite consoles? Consoles? Yeah. Consoles, yes. What's your favorite console, Tommy? Hmm. Probably. Let's see. Where the the best memories are from uh, Super Nintendo mm -hmm. days? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I agree, with, uh, yeah, I agree with Tommy though. Like, yeah. you know, Super Nintendo. I guess, I guess like the DS is pretty good. Not not really a 3DS, but the, mm -hmm. the DS. Um, that was that was nice. I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I played a lot of games on that. Awesome. That's yeah, I, I would I would just say the same as what Tommy said. Tommy's right. <laughs> The boys, right? Even with the right. even with opinion questions. He's like, yeah, that's, yeah, what yep. he said. That works. Yep. <laughs> that is correct. That is the correct answer. <laughs> um, I have another question um, for you guys as well. Let's see here. Um, oh, difficulty. Let's talk about the difficulty of um, of Super Meat Boy. And that's something that you know. I remember when I first purchased this game and uh, I saw the videos for. It, I was like, wow, this is going to be a pretty difficult game. And I love. I love I love games where you don't have to choose a difficulty. It's just like, look, if you can't play this game, then you should just put your controller down. <laughs> you know, I mean, I but, feel like I'm losing my mind right now, Tommy. Are you feeling like, like we're reliving a, a time? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Like it's this is really, this, why this is extra weird. Weird is because like I just got off Skype with with Andy Holmes of Spelunky. Oh wow! Okay. And they're they're releasing soon, and like their embargo date is like within a few hours. And he was like, <laughs> "How did you deal with this? Do you remember this?" And I'm like reliving it, and now like having these Meat Boy questions reasked <laughs> again. Like, yes, I feel like, <laughs> oh my god! I feel like at some point in time, like I'm gonna wake up and it's I'm gonna be back then, and none of that will have happened. And we gotta do we gotta crunch again. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta do it again, Tommy. <laughs> you fucking bastards. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, difficulty. Um, I just oh, I just remember you know when I when I played it, and I was like I just. The two, the two words that I could not stop having come out of my mouth were "fuck you." <laughs> I, I just could not stop. I, every every time I would die, I was like, "You kidding me right now?" Um, <laughs> we never were kidding you. Yeah, we were, we were serious the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what was the, the what made it? What made you guys decide to? And I've noticed that you know with um, the game Binding of Isaac too. Quite a very difficult, quite a difficult game as well. Quite um, a difficult game. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, right. Um, is this going to be a trend in the games to come that you guys make in the future? Are you going to are you guys planning on continuing this um, trend of having the difficulty be this be the same? I think we'll always make difficult games, but not like not because we get off on upsetting people or whatever. It's, it's like, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. just a little idea. It's, it's, but... <laughs> it's about giving you like a realistic challenge and letting you feel like you've accomplished something. Like we're mm-hmm. not we're not in it to like talk down to the player. Yeah, yeah. And treat them like they are little children because we know they're not. Even if they are little children, we know they can deal with it. Like, mm-hmm. there's, it, there's been a good ten plus years, maybe fifteen years of just coddling gamers, mm-hmm. and and it's made them soft and made them not realize what a challenge is and what it feels like to do something and then actually succeed <laughs> or do something that's like not, simply not meant for every single person to do. Um, there's that's what it is at, at its core like we make we make games that are challenging so you can feel good about yourself and not feel like you know i'm i'm sure there are a lot of people who can go through life being lied to by every little thing telling you you're uh-huh. so good look at you <laughs> here's, halo, a, here's a check like, point like you you beat halo everybody fucking beats halo like true that's what it's yeah. like. like you beat it it's they don't make it that hard they you just they want you to beat it and then the same thing with like diablo you beat diablo Good for you. My mom could beat Diablo. Like it <laughs> makes for people to fucking beat it. And like that that's not a good thing. It's like lying. It's lying to people. Yeah. Like it's, it's it's it also just goes with the whole horrible mentality of people not wanting to try hard to get something. Like mm-hmm. yeah. you know, if you want to feel good about yourself and you want to have something great, you gotta try really hard. And sometimes it's yeah. really hard mm-hmm. to do. And, and like- um it's it's one of those realities that people don't like to subscribe to because I would want to do the least amount of work possible and get by. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind sure. of the mentality of most people who play video games. Most people who play video games, I don't think they even want to realize they want to be challenged at all. They just <laughs> want to, you know, pass the time. Yeah. But that's not what we do. Yeah, and then you it's punish just... them for thinking that way, don't you? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I, could, I could say I could say I've had plenty of um, runs of Isaac where. You know, I clocked in like 40 minutes just to die and then have to, you know, restart the entire game again and all that sort of stuff. That's life. And I like that. Right. <laughs> and what I liked about in, in the in the uh, in indie game, the movie, um, you know, you talked about how um, how you're teaching, you know, like you the, like the first like what first world pretty much of Meat Boy is, you know, teaching the player things later on in the game. And I really liked you know, it's not like your generic tutorial of like, okay, here is push A to jump, or you know, you know, it's the game itself is just very um, simplistic. It's essentially very simpl- with the controls at least. Yeah, I mean, it's not something that you know you have to use every single button on the damn Xbox to you know to play. There, there's, there's no reason to. Yeah, exactly. Tom, Tom, Tommy wanted to do the the, the three button analog jumps. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's. Yeah. Okay, Tommy. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's three three analogs. That. I also and then, and then you, it, it connect. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. You you got You got to <laughs> jump when you're hitting the jump button on the. Connect. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're gonna turn it into a twisted pixel game. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. All you have to do, you have to play Meat Boy, except you have to hold your hands up the whole time. <laughs> yeah. You play it with a controller and everything's fine, but it knows if your hands are going down. <laughs> and it, yeah. you know, if, if your hands are down for too long, you you just pop. Oh, man, that's great. Uh, <laughs> that. Hey guys, remember Connect? Remember that? Yep. The thing I never yeah. got. I, I have to I have to say, because the funny thing is, is when we were getting um, interviewed two years ago about all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a, the the question. Are you ever gonna do anything for Connect? And I was like, we both were like, 
No, because nothing will ever be good for Kinect, and it'll die off, and no one will care. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened, that. pretty much. Correct. Correct. Right, we were. Listen to us. We know what we're talking about. Connect. Buy it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew the Connect was going to stay around when it was in a Happy Meal at Burger King. <laughs> Fuck you. Did they like the game they used to demo the Connect? I don't think it even got released. You, there's like Milo or something, wasn't it? Oh yeah, that didn't get released. Oh, it never did. The little no, little the one like where you draw a picture no, no, no. and you can hand it to that kid in the game never released. <laughs> <laughs> it probably wasn't real. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. It probably just it like a tech made. demo or something. No, I guarantee. No, Tommy's right. It probably never actually was made. It was just like, a video that was synced up really well. No, because that's what they did with the, the, the Wii originally. They, they, like, faked a video of people playing the games all crazy. <laughs> it's all fake. Like, they have an idea of what they want to do, and then they realize the text just not there. Yeah, that's what they did with the, yeah, the, the first Kinect videos were all fake. Like, at their E3 when they announced it, what was it called? The, uh, what was the first name of the Kinect? Uh, no, uh, uh, the Project, Project Atoll. Atoll. Project yeah, Atoll. Atoll. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was the, it. Those were all fake. They were all <laughs> fake. Oh, God. They get you so excited about a game, and you're like, oh. It's called business, kids. That's not game development. But that's how it works. It's yeah. marketing. When you, oh, yeah. when, you fake, when you fake things and you and you lie, then yep. I, it's business. Yeah. That's business. Okay. You're right. You're right. And uh, um, Andrew, did you have a question? Yes, this is a big question, and I'm sure a lot of people want to know. Um, what's your influence for um like the references like the you know references to games and popular culture in uh your games oh well i mean that's a lot of them are just really obvious like mario you know the game's called super meat boy and it's abbreviated smb but the, like, i've also yeah. um i've noticed <laughs> items like in the binding of isaac like my little unicorn and pinky eye which are most likely references to the Friendship is magic, I'm guessing. You know what's funny? No. But, really? But they <laughs> wow. They know, like, it's an accidental thing. I've never seen the show, but like, I didn't even know what a brony was until I made that game. And then all these people like kind of come out of the woodwork and they're like, oh, you're a brony. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but, you know, <laughs> that's cool. And, you know, people started grabbing onto it. And mm-hmm. no, like, <laughs> my, like my, my little unicorn was just simply... It was a unicorn horn, and like I didn't want to call it unicorn horn, so I was, you know, thought of My Little Pony, but old My Little Pony, not whatever the new thing is. Ah, okay then. Oh, but, there you go. Yeah, I mean, a lot of like, you have no idea. Like, I get questions like constantly on like Form Spring that say, um, "You must be a big fan of Hakan Yakavaga from the anime," and I'm like, "What the fuck's that? I don't know what that is." And like, it just it happens constantly. People wow. are like, "Oh, is this is a reference to this, and this is a reference to that," and I guess people are just like looking for more reference, but of course a lot of things referencing, you know, self-referential and yeah. video game references and whatever else. It's because I'm completely unoriginal and I have no ideas of my own. <laughs> but I noticed there's also stuff like um, some of uh, the beggars in Binding of Isaac. They like have like Forever Alone face and troll faces on the bombs and stuff like that. Yeah, I have a copyright uh, of all those. All those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's all> my- <laughs> yeah. You you created you created the memes. Just so you could use them in the game. <laughs> yep. There you go. So, so, so here's a question for both of you guys. Um, you already told us your favorite consoles. So you guys talk a lot about. Um, I, I also I want to mention Tommy. I'm really jealous of your of your room. All those posters on your wall. That's pretty. That is pretty awesome. <laughs> it is pretty badass. It is badass, man. <laughs> um, but a question I have for both of you guys is. Um, we're talking old, you know, because your Super Meat Boy was a big influence on old, um, influenced by old 8-bit, like NES, Super NES games. Um, what are some of you guys, growing up as kids, um, what were some of you guys' favorite video games you played? Hey, wait, Tommy, I'm going to do yours and you want to do mine. Is that, how's that? There you go. It's like a, tw- All right. like a TV show. All right. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy's favorite games in the NES era were the Mega Mans. Mm. Okay. Nice. Right? right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, and, well, of course, you like Mario, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't... No, all I'm thinking about is what was on your wall, and I don't think you actually like those games. Like, <laughs> yeah, <I guess. laughs> he, he does it ironically. He's really like a hipster deep down. <laughs> <laughs> I liked... I liked uh... <laughs> I liked uh, Tailspin before it 
was cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate I hate that I hate that because it's like you see all these um, you know like you think of uh, Tailspin or uh, even Ducktales back in the day oh man, um and now like all these younger people are like oh yeah man those shows were awesome I remember those when I was a kid and they're like you are a kid <laughs> what 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 are my games Tommy? I'd say you liked uh, Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you like the Mario's? So your favorite favorite is Mario Two. Yep. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. Uh, Interesting see. choice. And you really really like um, uh, Adam's family's Uncle Fester. That- <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I never got. You know, I recently played that again, and I never could still get anywhere. It's like <laughs> you go around shooting shit, and you upgrade your weapon all the way, and then where do you go? <laughs> I don't know. That's as far as I got, too. And I, I just remember it always had the Everson Lake and Palmer music to it. I, I remember that, that, was the, that was the old top down uh, yeah. Adam's Family game, right? Like yeah. the like yeah, Legend of really Zelda. Strange. I'm reminded of the Angry Video Game Nerd review of that game. He didn't oh. like it, in case you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty. He was pretty pissed about that game. Yeah. <laughs> he hit it with a train, I think, or something like that. <laughs> or a toy train, at least. It's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. So, Andrew, you got another question? Um. Yes. Okay. This one, I'm always curious about. If you look at retail games, like you know, games that you can get for you know sixty dollars, they all seem to be in a similar style. Like, at the moment, it always seems that they're, you know, future FPSs that are set in the future. So they're all kind of samey. But with indie games, they're so mm-hmm. much more creative and unique with the gameplay mechanics and storyline. Mm-hmm. What, you like, know what's... Why? Yeah, what's the reason behind that? Because it really... Very, it's just... very easy. It's, it's this thing called money. <laughs> and, I'll break, and I'll break it down for you. This is okay. how it works. Okay. Um, <laughs> When you're a big company and you have a lot of money floating around and you're like, we got this money and we want to invest in the next game, but the economy is not looking too good. So we have to not take any kind of crazy risks. So they'll go and they'll ask a bunch of these soulless losers. They're called marketing (laughs) business people. (laughs) (laughs) I'm 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 writing this down right now. Yeah. (laughs) It's a good thing that these marketing so these, these marketing business people don't write reviews because I'd be a little worried. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but so these people they get together and they roll the dice and make up some bullshit reason why they believe that space marines are the new big thing that everybody likes. Oh man. And they'll have all these polls and graphs to prove their point. Yep. Then they will convince you know, these designers or whatever else, that that's the way to go. Then they will then they will say, well, then what kind of game should it be? And then they will go and they will look at the market and they will say, well, what kind of game sold well? And not looking at the actual reasons why they sold well, but more just the general idea of, like, it's 3D and it's the shooter. All right, we're going to do a 3D shooter and it's Space Marines. Okay, perfect. And then they invest their money and then they release their game and it does okay because people will still buy the same dumb shit when it looks pretty and... Because it's got and, a fancy title or whatever. <laughs> and it's essentially the word the 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 more the economy takes its humble, the more you're gonna see playing it safe at all costs. You're just gonna see a sequel, you're gonna see a game that's just like another game that did well, you're just gonna see ripoff after ripoff. And the indie scene, since they're not that you know uh the money isn't usually that big of a deal and they're not risking a lot, mm. they can take bigger risks and make crazier shit. And that's the simple answer, honestly. That is that is the real answer. That is exactly why at E3 all you saw was the same game, but yet it was different, made by different studios. Oh, yeah, we tore E3 and you on, sort of, didn't we, a few episodes back? Yeah, we had, back, we, had a pod, we had a few episodes back. We did an E3 special, and it was more like we ripped E3 a new asshole. Yeah. Tommy was there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there. Awesome. How about, so, what did you, so were you in the front row for the Usher um no. The ushers. Okay. I, I <laughs> the spent Microsoft. Most all of my time in the hotel room, <laughs> work stuff, and I went to the floor twice, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't give a shit. Uh. There was... <laughs> I tried. I tried really, really hard to be like upbeat about it and go in there and go. All right, 
and I'm going to see what I can see. But as soon as I walked in, I was immediately drained because it was all garbage. <laughs> Uh, oh, wow. We finished. Well, I, all I can remember is that we finished off that episode with me saying E3 sucks. That was the very last thing that was <laughs> said on the episode. <laughs> it's sad. It's really sad because okay, so I I I compared it to this. So I didn't go to E3 last year, 2011, but I was there for 2010 because I was showing Meat Boy there. The uh, E3 I went to in 2010 was basically identical to the E3 I went to in 2012. There was oh, wow. a Gears of War announced. There was another Call of Duty announced. Yeah. Uh, there was a Castlevania, and what was what was the other stupid crap? Oh, another Halo. It's yeah. like it was it was all the same shit. It was the yeah. exact same thing over again. And it when I realized that I was just kind of standing in the hall, and I go, oh. <laughs> and it just it just like knocked the wind out of me because I even to this day I sit here and I go, all right, what what game am I looking forward to? I know. I'm looking forward to the new Metal Gear, although I don't think it'll be all that great because mm-hmm. it's not, you know, I, I, I don't, platinum. I don't know. I, they, they make cool games. It's just not mm-hmm. the kind of games that I like. Um, yeah. So, so there's that, and then it's like, what else? Nothing. It's like, <laughs> oh, another Halo. And Final Fantasy X on <laughs> here, just so I can play Final Fantasy X again, which is what? What is that? A ten-year-old game. Yeah. 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 Wow. So yeah, and like everything else is like I played the Wii U. Um, How was it? I wasn't. I wasn't impressed. Okay. I mean, Mario looked nice in HD. Mhm. Um, but honestly, like it was like Nintendo Land. I didn't care. Uh, Arkham City. I played that last year. Why? Why do I care? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that has and enjoys Arkham City already has the system to play Arkham City. Yeah, and they yeah, yeah. Played it, or they'll buy it soon. And even if they didn't have the system, and let's say some kid, he really, really wants to play Arkham City this Christmas. All right, really wants to play it. He's a big fan of Batman. He watched the movie this summer. He's all about Batman. What are the parents gonna do? They're gonna buy him like a three hundred dollar Wii U or a ninety nine dollar Xbox? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's yeah. It, it's it's sad because and I always wonder if it's it's just a symptom of getting older or if everybody's just getting uh, more and more like lazy when it comes to developing stuff because I remember I remember one of my dreams was to go to E3 that was like one of my dreams for a long long time yeah and one of my dream next year is to not go like I I, <laughs> hope, so. I I hope Shannon's not showing anything. I hope I have no reason to go, and that would be amazing. That would be. That would be. <laughs> um, and, and that's one thing I wanted to talk to you about, Tommy, too. As we, I watched, uh, I just watched Indie Game the movie um, a few hours ago. Great, great movie. And for those who have not watched it, you have to check it out if you're a big, big fan of indie games like uh, I am, and obviously these guys are. Definitely check it out. <laughs> Um, There's no mention of Cave Story in that movie. I know. I can, There's no. no pictures of La Mulana. Hey, where, where was where was Notch? Yeah, where was Notch? <laughs> I didn't see Pixel in that movie. God. I know, right? <laughs> but one of one of my one of the lines from that movie that really uh, really caught my attention was something that Tommy said. How he was ranting on Call of Duty. Um, <laughs> how do you how do you feel about those games, man? How do you feel about Call of Duty? Um. I just, it's, it's not fun. I yeah. don't like yeah. it. I'm not good at Okay, so there's a bias. <laughs> there's a bias. There's okay. a real bias because I'm not good at first-person shooters at all. Right, first, okay. I, uh, but, on, you know, I'm not good at first-person shooters, but I like the ones that have something new to them. Like, I like Skyrim, uh, but it wasn't oh, like yeah. witchy kind of. You don't play multiplayer with Skyrim and then somebody like throws a dagger through your head and then they come <laughs> over and bag you and call you a faggot. That doesn't happen. <laughs> have some, so, old, have some eight-year-old say, I just killed you with my sword. I'm going to fuck your mom tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't... Those games don't do anything for me. I, I can see why people enjoy them because there's like this crazy competitive yeah. whatever to them, but... I don't like them, and I don't think they're very good, and they're definitely not creative or original in any way because they're just they, it's 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 like nobody really. I, do people really care about Madden anymore? 
Like, I I don't even think they're honest. Never played it. Yeah, I they would they always come out with like new Maddens, and the new Maddens are just like, oh, we have a new sweat shader. Oh, we have this. Well, now Call of Duty (laughs) is doing the exact same thing because Call of Duty and um, I don't even remember the other. Is that Call of Duty is Black Ops, right? Yeah, 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 Black Ops is one of them. Yeah, but it's just the same thing. They're just going. What they've done is, I guess, Black Ops sold what, like, 30 million copies or some stupid, crazy number like that. So the company, which is a very smart business move, is they're like, oh, okay, we'll do Black Ops too. Let's hire a couple writers. We'll use the same engine. We'll improve it a little bit. Turnaround time will be like, I don't know, maybe a year, and we'll yeah. sell another 30 million copies. There's no like risk there for them because yeah. they mm. people just tried and tested. You know, just just keep doing it up and. I mean, it's the same thing with Halo. I mean, how different was yeah. Halo yeah. from Halo 3? I mean, True. like literally, I would, I, that's a question I pose because I actually uh-huh. don't know the differences between the two. <laughs> I, and see, can't imagine, I can't imagine that it's like, it's not the difference between Mario 2 and Mario 3. I know no, it's no, not that. No. It's not the difference between uh, Final Fantasy 10 and Final Fantasy 12. It's not <laughs> that kind of difference. <laughs> It's it's got to be something like oh well there's a new story a couple new weapons and uh, the game plays exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And see that's what gets and that's what gets me about you know games like Call of Duty or even you know Gears of War, it's it's more of the same. And the thing yeah. about and the reason why I, I I appreciate the indie games I I really appreciate you know you guys and what you do is because you guys are fresh you guys come out with you know something completely different. Funky fresh Buggy fresh exactly oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and and i really feel as if um you know indie games are kind of like or the future of gaming yeah not, not, you know not madden definitely yeah not call of duty you know yeah. it's more of the indie games so you know what's gonna be awesome is what? when what? movies actually get to that point because movies are basically the same they're yeah. they're, they're just as unoriginal they're all remakes of Older movies now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, movies, are, 20, movies already had that. And then they the, had that, you know, yeah. that was about, I mean, the whole Sundance thing, like when Sundance started, that mm-hmm. was like the, the the rebirth of the indie movement for movies. Mm-hmm. Hit another slump again. I guess everything kind of goes in waves. Yeah, it, it does seem like it just goes in waves because. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here's here's the perfect example. All right, and this okay. is this is the one time that this bit me in the ass. Okay. okay. <laughs> So, you know, 21 Jump Street, all these fucking stupid movies that are coming out. And mm-hmm. I see I see that they're redo that that a movie called Project X is coming. Out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, are they fucking really redoing that movie with the monkeys and Matthew Broderick and they're flying airplanes? <laughs> no. No, Project X is some some other like horrible movie about a party. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, well, this isn't the originality I was talking about, guys. My, my <laughs> party movie. I would have rather them redo Project X than that piece of shit. That's ah, awesome. It's horrible. It's That's horrible. Awesome. I'm an old, cranky man. <laughs> Nothing's original. Um, everybody's dumb. <laughs> Get off my lawn! Yeah, Get off my lawn! <laughs> Andrew, did you have another question for him? Uh, yeah. Um, what are your uh, primary design tools? Like, you know, Edmund, like, what's your art equipment? Like, Tommy, what kind of software do you use for the programming stuff? Tommy makes me. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll use what I make and like it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. That's, that's, that's what I do. Right now, he's like Frankensteining Flash into this insanity. <laughs> and I'm going to use that. Okay, then. Awesome. So, one uh, other thing, um, would you guys, since you guys started making, like, when, you know, when you started making games, like Edmund, when you did Gish or Gesh, and um, then you guys did, did you, Super Meat. Did you just say Gesh? <laughs> it's Gish. It's with an I. Yeah. But when you guys were doing that, um... <laughs> he loves you, really. Don't worry. Gesh. Gesh. Um. Yeah. <laughs> um you guys find yourselves now more critical of video games than you were now that you're making them more so okay, now. Yeah, this is, I want I want to talk about this just just for a sec so people understand like because I've I've noticed some of this like in response to the movie that they there's a lot of people out there who don't completely understand 
indie game designers and they see they see since indie 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 games and mainstream games are the opposite in quotes yeah. um, that they are against each other in some way when that's not a, that's not at all true like huh. Tommy and I are just as critical as indie games as we are mainstream games and we all play mainstream games as well as indie games there's no indie developer who's like this snob who only plays indie games and doesn't play mainstream games right we, let's clarify there's no actual developer that's like a snob there are plenty of people who are like oh i'll only play <laughs> yeah i'm sure there are a bunch of fucking retards out there that that can probably but <laughs> actual like Tommy said, there is no we don't know any we don't yeah. know any developers that we would call developers that are anything like that. That's yeah. that is a myth. That is some. It's not true. It's it's uh, all any all any game developers love games. Period. Regardless of where they're coming from, they're yeah. just as critical about any game as any other game. It just seems like it's a mainstream thing because it's very easy to be critical of mainstream games right now because they're being so terrible for reasons we've mentioned. Um, but no, trust me. Like, there are some shit indie games. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> true. But it, the thing about shitty indie games is you don't know about them because no yeah, one's yeah. playing them and no oh, one's talking so, about them. So they just of, they fade away. Kind of a vicious uh, cycle, then I guess, isn't it? In the indie game world, you know, if your game's bad, it's not going to get noticed at all. It's true, but then well, people that's, you'll, that's, you'll find. In, you know, in the NDC, and Tommy and I have both seen this a lot, where it's like, uh-huh. I made this game, and it's it's not getting the attention it deserves, and then people get really like jealous of somebody else who's who's succeeding, and then they troll them, and they're like, I if I if I only just had you know the kind of reach that these people have, or you know the press or whatever else that I you know my game would be awesome. But the reality of the situation is, if the game is good, people will play it. That's just awesome. fact. If the game's really good. It will do really well, and <laughs> there's a really easy way to prove this. It's this little game called Minecraft that nobody fucking knew about right. at all. It was out for like a year before it got popular, and like that game just blew up by itself because it was good. And it's like it would have been this unknown hidden game that was free because I played it on Tig Source years and years ago when he was demoing it. But the thing is, is it was fun, and it got grew and grew and grew and grew and ballooned into this giant monster. And everybody has the same chance of doing this. Like, if the game's good, it'll find its audience, its audience will find it. It helps if you talk about it and push yourself out there, of course. But in the end, if the game's not good, it doesn't matter how great your press is. You know, no one's going to play it. Okay, then. What do you think um, your, I guess, claim to fame was? You know, what what got everybody, you know noticing, you know, stuff like Super Meat Boy and Binding of Isaac and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, but they were fun. Okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I, think, I think that would be it. That would be the probably realistic thing to say. Um, that people thought they were fun and told their friends about them. So word of mouth then. It's not like some special thing. Like your game's fun. It's fun to play. It makes you feel good when you play it. That's usually special enough. It's all you need. Exactly. You. Okay then. Do you have a question for them, Brian? Okay then. Um, <laughs> what's he <laughs> said? Yeah, he died. Um, anyway. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll jump. I'll, I'll jump in and tell my tell my story. I got a story. Oh yeah, go for it. Awesome. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything, so it's very appropriate. Okay. <laughs> so, Tommy, my cousin, uh, he lives in Arizona. He woke up at about 1 in the morning to the sound of somebody going through his stuff in the in the living room. And he was fucking freaked out. So he has he also has a baby, and the baby's in the other room. And him and, his, him and his wife are like, oh, my God, there's somebody breaking into our house. And they hear him, and they hear him rummaging through everything, and it sounds like there's multiple people in there. And they open the door, and, and Gavin looks out, and he's like, he's seeing like a, a hunched over silhouette of a like of a, of a it looked like an old man or something, and he wasn't sure if there was another person there, and he starts yelling at him, going, "Get the fuck out of my house!" <laughs> like, you know, like, there's nothing here. Leave, leave. And the whole thing is like they have to go like by him in order to get to the baby because it's like down the hall, and they, they're like guarding the door basically to make sure he doesn't come through. So. 
his wife goes out the window and goes next door to like call the police and he's still there yelling and screaming at this guy and the guy's just not responding at all so he just goes out grabs the baby comes back into the room gives the baby out the window to his wife and then um goes out the window himself okay cops come (laughs) they find this guy laying on his on their table (laughs) <laughs> he's laying on his back on the table he's covered himself with the whatever they put over the the table like it's a blanket <laughs> the table cover and the cops you know want to beat the shit out of him i don't know they break the table in the process and they take the guy and leave and um they were able to piece everything together of what happened because the wall his wallet fell out or whatever and they could go through it and see all of his like there was like a paper trail quite literally he saved all the receipts that he got from the moment he like Went to a ball game earlier earlier that day, got really wasted, then went to like a Circle K, got a bunch of alcohol, and then like eventually trailed <laughs> back to here. And they assumed that like he got a ride with somebody and told him, oh, that's my house. He thought this was his house. He must have, or said his friend's house. He slept in the living room, thought that that was his bed, which <laughs> <laughs> was the table, covered himself with it, and, um, and then passed out there, not hearing that they were screaming bloody murder at him to get out of the fucking house. Now the the extra funny thing is, my, I got I, I I got the story told to me by him earlier today, and then I got the sto- story told to me again by my mother, who um said, did, did you know that um, did you know that he did, did you know what nationality he was? And I said, yeah, they told me he was Native Native American, and she's like, well, you know Native American is Indian, right? And I'm like, I'm not gonna crack my, crack my mom correcting me at this point. <laughs> but I said, I said yes, I know that, and she goes. Those people can't drink. They get blackout drunk. <laughs> that was the end of conversation. <laughs> that was that was <laughs> that was the story. Um, among the words of wisdom. <laughs> oh no! Oh yeah! And she goes, and then she said, "That's the reason why you can't drink in their casinos." <laughs> and that's why I would. <laughs> and that's why I want to move to America when I'm older. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I said, oh, um, you're, you're, you're so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's talk. I want to ask you guys a question, a quick question about um, indie game, the movie. Um, how did that all get? How did that whole project get started? Like, who approached you guys about that? So it started out as uh, Jamie and Lee Sam were doing like some some like piece. This is on uh, Alec Holoka, like through some government thing, is like the Manitoba government or something like that. And uh, it turned out really, really well. And they were, were talking to Alec about like other developers, and uh, he mentioned me, and you know I talked to him on the phone, and then they came down and they like filmed us at GC and stuff. So it was really like just through recommendations of. Of other, an, uh, of another developer, really. It wasn't really. I can't say it was like plans to be like this crazy big documentary or anything like that. They originally just went around and were they interviewed like 20, 20 or they had like twenty developers, yeah, twenty or something like that. Yeah. And you know, just kind of going through their stories and you know the games that they were making and that and they. They just decided to to trim it down and focus on uh, just the ones that you see in the movie. I guess I guess to make it like more of a coherent movie, okay. more of a movie, <laughs> movie. I think. Okay, that, rather than getting all like having lots and lots of different. Yeah, because if you had lots and lots of develop, like it's footage that I'm pretty sure they're going to release in the future, because it's all really good interviews with a bunch of developers, but like. Uh, just imagine the the impact of the movie would have been less on like an emotional scale if it was just tons and tons of developers. It's it just like, been, look how many developers we managed to get. You know, look at us. Yeah, it would, it would have been like it. I honestly, well, I'm I'm no filmmaker, so I honestly don't know how that movie would have played out. I I think I think the way that it was done is is pretty much like the best way they could have done it is focusing on a few developers follow through you know the various stages of the oh like i mean it's it's like a perfect sort of setup you have fez that yep. was in development for forever yeah and then you know his struggles us that 
they basically started filming right when we were, you know, we we were just showing the game publicly, and we were, you know, like eight, eight months away from release. So they got us through the entire release, and then you have John who has already lived everything that these other characters have lived and has his own reflections on it. So, yeah, it just made it into, like, a more coherent story in that okay. way. What do you um, actually think about the games of, I guess, the co-stars of uh, Indie Game the Movie made? So, like, what did you th- have you played Fez and Braid? And if so, what did you think of them? We Braid is... Awesome. We played all the games. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we played all of them, yeah. Um... Fez is pretty. Fez is yeah. pretty. <laughs> Bray, yeah, they're, I mean they're all they're all good games. You know, yeah. I think I think I don't think it would have been smart for them to focus on a game that wasn't that good, really, because then it would have just made the person seem like a loser. Or pay the uh, person, yeah. Like, I think they went out of their way to like make sure that they interviewed a lot of different people who had prominent games or were prominent people in the industry. Yeah. Um, for sure, like people who had had some track record. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, yeah, no, I mean, Braid, Braid is one of the best indie games of all time, and um, Fez is a great game as well. Um, it's, like Tommy said, it's a very, very pretty game. And the, the music is also pretty amazing as well. Um, but yeah, like like Tommy was saying, like, I think it, when they started out, like, if you look at, if you go look at, like, the original trailer for the Kickstarter, which was, like, this little vignette that was featured in the movie, where I'm talking about the, my game Ether. Yeah, I imagine the what they originally were gonna do was basically imagine twenty of those back to back, and it was just gonna be little vignettes, kind of mm-hmm. like in the same vein of there's a documentary called Objectified, which does something like that as well. And I remember hearing them say that word a lot, so I'm pretty sure that that was what they were going for originally. But then saw a dramatic story arc kind of unfolding with us, and you know whittled it down. I think I think there was another actually another developer that was part of the final movie that they had to cut out just because of time. Yeah, I think I think, I think so. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it was it was a great it was they a really cut out great... the What was that? So they cut the fourth, fourth developer out cuz still killed him. Cuz the fourth the fourth developer was the pixel guy and uh they, he killed him. Yeah, he killed Oh, he killed him with a copy of La Mulana, and that's why none of those are in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Wow. That is... Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's something. That's great. Yeah, I know. It's fucked up, isn't it? You wouldn't think that, but it's 100% true. <laughs> well, guys, we're about to wrap this show up. Um, you know, I just, I just really want to thank the both of you guys for being on the show. Um... I have one more question for you guys right now. You, you, got, you, you know, you guys say that you're, uh, you're gamers. You know, you guys play all the current games or whatever. Um, what are you guys? What games are you guys playing right now? What's it's a show we always ask. You know, our other guests. I got, I got a big answer. I got a big answer for that. I'm yeah. playing the game that everybody will be playing next week. Oh. It's a game called Spelunky. Spelunky. Ah. It, it is already my game of the year. Oh, um, okay. It is wow. a fucking amazing. And well, you'll everybody will know because they'll all be playing it. So, <laughs> right on. Um, Tommy, what about you? What are you playing right now, man? Uh, not my. I would be playing Spelunky, but I rarely go. Uh, um, but I am playing uh, Metal Gear on the Vita. Oh wow! How was that? that? It's good. I mean, it's Metal Gear. It's Metal Gear Two and Three. Oh, cool. Same, awesome. Same game as you played a long time ago, but uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> It's gotten to the point where well, we just simply have to play the remade games. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like what? It's kind of like it's kind of like, it's kind of like getting to the point where it's like you're watching the remade movies, but the remade games are usually better sometimes. Yeah. 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 Games, games, games can do that. Movies, not so much. Yeah. yeah games yeah. can like improve on like the art and the sound, right? And stuff like that. You know, like Metal Gear, Metal Gear HD. It, is better than the original one because it's exactly the same except it's prettier. Mm-hmm. Like, so that works. It works out works out very well there. So so what's in store for so, team, so what's in store for Team Meat? What do you guys got coming up? Is, is... Tommy, what are you what are you doing right now? I am raping the shit out of Flash to make it do what I want it to do. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it stinks in his house. It, it does. It stinks in here. <laughs> and if you, um, uh, yeah. No, yeah. Tommy, Tommy's um, that's, that's, making making a whole new engine, uh, so we can uh, make awesome, awesome games on it. But the the game that will be coming out first will be Super Meat Boy the game, which will be a complete remake and re envisioning. It's I, I don't I, we have to like word it in a way so people understand we that can't it's a new game. It's a remake anymore. It's just a new game. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, remake like, like, implies that we're, we're we're just upping the graphics and putting it on a touch screen, which is yeah, incredible. like. I'm yeah. thinking of more like, like, like remember, remember Zelda 2? Yeah. <laughs> remember how it was a completely different game? Right, right. Well, imagine well, if Zelda 2 was good. That's what we're trying to do. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That'll definitely be interesting to see that. I can't, I definitely can't wait for, uh, you guys got it. Now, is that just, is that, a, is that going to be a console release too? Or is that just, um, more of a, um, tablet? Probably just touch. That's just a touch screen release. Okay. Actually, Edmund, I have a, a question, I guess, uh, directed specifically to you. Um, I heard that the that you were planning on releasing a 3DS version of The Binding of Isaac, but it got uh, cancelled because of, uh, was it questionable religious content or something? Yeah. Yeah, and then I think you said in your form spring that you're planning on releasing a console version. Of yeah, it's not really me as much as it is another team of people that are trying to get something together in order to make it happen. Um, I, um, I don't, I don't have, I, I, I think it's gonna happen. Do I don't know what the hell it'll be on, um, <laughs> but um, I won't, uh, I won't really be involved in the the porting process. But I will make sure that it is very good. I won't, okay. I won't okay something that's not good. But I mean, I if it's essentially gonna be like a port with extra content. I don't think you can really go wrong. So yeah. So are you going to remove uh, just so you don't mind if they remove some of the content that might get it? Oh no, I do mind. They have to put everything in. Ah, okay. I just awesome. It's, it's um no like but you don't no, want them to I, change your original not, vision. I'm guessing. No, 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 no. That is. I'm not. Awesome. We're not. If 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 anybody wants it, they have to take it as is. I mean, Sony wants it. Sony wants it regardless of we could put. We could have someone raping Jesus on it, and I'm sure Sony would still want it. At this point. But like, uh, it's it's not about that. Like, I don't know. I have a feeling that Nintendo could come around, you know, once 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 somebody hands them a build that says, you know, here here's the the remake. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. You know, it, you want it, you know. And then I think it'll be a lot different than somebody like back when we pitched to or they pitched to Nintendo. You know, the Binding of Isaac was pretty relatively unknown still, and um, uh -huh. I'm pretty sure all all the like head person did was basically look it up on YouTube and then see the intro of the game and say, ah, oh, no, I don't think so. But you never know; opinions change. Who knows? Yep. I have no I have no idea what it's going to be on, and it's not really in my hands, and I'm not going to really worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, there's basically there's basically a team of people who really want to do it, and they have a really good track record. So I'm all for it, you know, but it's all, it's basically all in their court and whatever they do, whatever deals they make, I want no involvement with because I'm so <laughs> done with any business, anything, you know, they do that, you know, give me my, give me my percentage and leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Cause, um, the thing is, oh, sorry, Brian, um, I'll oh, no, a go ahead. um because <laughs> I know that you've done and you did a, uh, a co-commentary with a YouTuber called, uh, Northern Lion, haven't you? Uh, oh, yeah. Ryan. Yeah. And when uh, The Wrath of the Lamb DLC came out, I don't know, not DLC, sorry, expansion. Sorry about that. <laughs> it, I mean, it's DLC, it's all the same fucking yeah. thing. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've been watching his stuff, but um, when he saw that um, there was Utero, he thought, like, originally thought, oh, maybe they changed the name to push for the 3DS release, like, when he first got there. Because, <laughs> like, you know, because I think the first time he got there, it wasn't the womb, he got the Utero the first time around. And it looked like yeah, the loops. It got all confused. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can, you can be rest assured that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna edit anything. We never had to edit anything with Meat Boy, and we thought we might. And we never, I don't know. It's just, not, it's not gonna happen. I mean, if it's something, something like super minor, like we'll approve it, but you have to remove Mom's pad. Then yeah, sure. You know, <laughs> you know Mom's pad was just there to be gross. There's no real <laughs> meaning behind it other than that. It was just gross. I'm still. So, <laughs> 
This I, I'd, I'd be fine with that. As long again, as long as I don't have to do anything, mm-hmm. I don't fucking care. <laughs> but I want I want the story to stay the same. It's not changing. And I gotta say one know. thing. When the, when Wrath of the Land came out, what was up with the widow? Why was she so tough to kill? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't think. I, don't I think, think we changed it that much. I don't. I, I think I we like think reduced like, her hit, hit points maybe by ten. Yeah. Percent. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was very noticeable to change. <laughs> but god damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, the game got way too big for me to wrangle at that point. Yeah, no, I get it. It's impossible to wrangle, and it's still kind of almost impossible to wrangle, and it took it took a week, it took a day to fix all the great game-breaking bugs, and then it took a week for me to actually balance it to the point of being happy with it again. Okay. Then. And and it's still, you know, it's actually still a bit in development. There's going to be one more update once once Florian can pick himself up off the you know, shower floor and <laughs> shake off his flu that he supposedly has. <laughs> Um, I'm sure that'll eventually come out, and it'll be the final update, and that will be it, and I will have to hear about it for the rest of my life, but never update it again. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> we'll one, we'll, one final question I have for both of you guys, and um, I just I want to get a, 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 any, a game developer's you know, uh, opinion on this. Since you guys use a lot, a lot of influences for Super Meat Boy, Bonnie Isaac are... You know, based off of old NES games, how do you guys feel about the state of Nintendo right now, um, as a company? Because <laughs> um, I've, I've, I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting this feeling that I, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I kind of hope I am because I'm, I, Nintendo's one of those companies that I've loved that we've all grown up on. And um, do you guys feel that that the Wii U might, I don't know, might, don't know, uh, might uh, what's what's that? What's that? Oh, I just turned my mic back on because I was echoing, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was... My thing my is, thing is, is that, that I feel like Nintendo's going to be one of those companies like Sega that, like that kind of just stops making, making consoles, consoles and they're going to go straight to game. Yeah, people yeah, have been people saying that for forever. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it'll actually become that until, until the, the days when video games change overall like the entire industry does. Um... <laughs> I think it would be safe to say if Nintendo was a brand new company, mm-hmm. it wouldn't survive. No. Yeah. I think a lot of it's. I think a lot of the reason that it's still successful has to do with uh, nostalgia and Mario. But Absolutely. if Mario was a newly introduced game right now, no one would care. It, it would. It would just be kind of a subpar platformer that would be forgettable for everybody. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Know, it's disappointing because. As as a Nintendo fan, and mm-hmm. as somebody who's had Nintendo and looked up to Nintendo and admired them my entire life, it mm-hmm. seems really easy, like, to to turn things around. Like, it, it would mm-hmm. seem like a no-brainer. You get out there, Reggie, like, kicks some... Well, me and Kyle Pulver were talking about the ultimate Nintendo press conference, and it would go <laughs> something like this. It would be... There would be some girl. She would. They, the lights would come on. She would be on a balance board, right? And mm-hmm. she would be doing some stupid shit on mm-hmm. the balance board, and nobody would really care. And then Reggie would come out, and he would take and he would kick her in the chest. But she would be rigged to these wires. <laughs> she would be rigged to these wires, and she would go exploding through the screen, and like the lights would flicker and everything. But when the screen cracked open, you would see a trailer for F Zero. Right. Oh. And then like everything would just show F zero. Then then after that trailer was done, it would pan back and it would just be showing Reggie's face and he would just be breathing really hard. <laughs> then it would he wouldn't say a word. It would cut to like a new like Super Metroid re envisioning, like this two D, three D platformer wow. Super Metroid game. Then it would cut to his face again, the camera's closer this time, and you can see <laughs> like the hotness of his breath on the lens of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and then it and then it like cuts again and you just see like another Star Fox, but not a shitty one where you run around and hit people with things, like one where you actually fly around and kill things like it's like it's supposed to be. And uh yeah. And it would be easy. And then he wouldn't have to say a word, he'd just walk off stage. And everyone would lose their fucking minds because it's everything that every Nintendo fan for the last thirty years has ever wanted. Well, not thirty. Twenty five? Twenty seven? Yep. Oh wow. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yep. Yeah. And 
and that's what your next game then. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I, think, I think Reggie's getting in on this call here. Yeah, yes, he's materialized. He's gonna hire. Him. <laughs> Said too much. <laughs> yeah, but it just it just seems it seems really easy to oh, to see. shift their stance right now. I don't know. Somebody's like recording this under some covers or something. That's what it yeah, somebody's rubbing a microphone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Somebody somebody had they're they're in their bed. Their parents will get mad if they hear them, so they get really under covers. <laughs> no, mom, I'm having a wank. Yeah. But yeah, like, I'm not awesome recording a podcast. Game, like, like if, if you just think of, like, all the companies that are out right now. Yeah. yeah. You know for a fact if Rare stopped being such pussies and made a new Battletoads, that it would sell amazingly. Oh God! Sure. Not, not people that don't even know about Battletoads would buy it. Wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be good. No, <laughs> I, I have a feeling that if they did remake that now, they would totally not uh, realize. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna give this to Rare. Rare, give us the rights to Battletoads. Oh we man, do it! Make <laughs> Battletoads for you. <laughs> it'll be gross. <laughs> it'll be it'll be so fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> like like the last so one was. Rare. Square, give me the rights to Act Razor. Oh my God, I would. That would be amazing. I want the rights to Mega Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. let's just the rights to Mega Man too. Let's just yeah, turn we'll over we'll all. Just, the... We'll just fucking do a Mega Man clone. Who cares? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, if you if you um. So good. Yeah, because it's because it was a good game twenty years ago, <laughs> when games used to be awesome. Yeah. yeah. I bet if you if you made um, battle toads, I bet you'd just be like every level would be the wind tunnel stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that stage. Exactly the same each time. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, it's randomly generated. Uh, oh god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Different speeds it's, as well. It's called it's called fuck you. That's why the game. <laughs> <laughs> If you thought the other games we made were bad, for difficulty, were, for difficulty, for difficulty. <laughs> yeah, for difficulty, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> this shit is hard. I do, I do like that Nintendo is making the 3DS XL because that little 3DS cramps my hands up. I don't like the little 3DS. Yeah, I know. I try. It cramps I, my style. Oh, I've got, <laughs> I've got, I've got small feminine hands, so it's fine for me. <laughs> I have gross monster hands and. Yeah, it is. It's painful. It's painful to play. Play. That's why I love the. I love the uh, the uh, DS XL. That was like the most comfortable thing in the world to play. That's, yeah, it was. It was much easier to use. <laughs> oh yeah, you might wonder. I'm so. I'm so hardcore. I play Super Meat Boy with a keyboard, not a gamepad. <laughs> oh, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that too. <laughs> it's not that bad with the keyboard. The controls fine for me. I think honestly, I think one of the first videos that we ever saw of somebody like, like doing some of the impossible uh, achievements, like no death runs, were, was done with the keyboard. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, people can get good with the keyboard. It's true. One of my favorite parts of indie game the movie was when you guys were looking at the YouTube videos of the people like getting pissed off at the game, and you're just sitting there laughing. And you're like. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was pretty amazing to see. Oh man, <laughs> it was a real morale boost for that day. I bet. Yeah. Well, guys, um, we got to go ahead and wrap up the show. But um, thank you so much for being. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time and and uh, yeah, you know, I... <laughs> chatting with us about about uh, about your games and uh, and the gaming industry as a whole and any games. So. And I'm gonna sound like a fanboy, but I can't state enough how much I enjoy your products and your games. It's just mm-hmm. brilliant. Well, thank <laughs> well, we'll try, try to uh, to state how much because you, you're just posting out and saying you you can't. Yeah, compared well, let's to just say if you <laughs> let's say if I had a button that could destroy the world, and then you said if you press it, we'll re- we'll release a new expansion for the Binding of Isaac or whatever, I'd press it without, in a heartbeat. But it would destroy well, the world, so we wouldn't have to... But, yeah, it would but we'd survive. <laughs> we'd survive. I don't care. You could, you could make it in 
I don't know, the afterlife or purgatory or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, if you well, if you, you, would, you, just, you would have to kill everybody but Ed and Florian because I don't have anything to do with it. Uh, we'll keep you around so we can make more super <laughs> or a new or like a super meat boy sequel cool. sorry yeah, Tom I didn't want to leave you out there <laughs> oh no, it's fine I'm left out all the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I if I had a button in front of me and someone's like I'll do anything you want if you don't press the button I would say nope <laughs> 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 That would be pretty good. Without hesitation. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do anything you want if you don't. And the button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. Okay then. So I guess like what we what we I think Brian might be dead again. <laughs> can you can you hear me? Am I good? Yep. Yep. He goes. Okay. Uh, here we so go. What we do is we normally ask. Uh, do you have any like shout outs you want to give or you know? Quest. Spelunky. Okay then. Play Spelunky. Buy it. Buy yeah, Spelunky, Spelunky and then play it. Then buy Spelunky, play it, and um... I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a shout out to my sister. Okay. Who unfriended, who unfriended me on Facebook because <laughs> I wouldn't let her use my Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> How could you? Yeah. That's terrible. That's horrible. I'm an evil person. Here? Edmund, what if she hears this? What if she hears? What if she hears? I don't know. Is she using my internet as well? <laughs> <laughs> she's using she's using your internet to unfriend you from Facebook. <laughs> yeah. How shitty is that? <laughs> she comes over to your house and she's like, I need to borrow your computer. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has to drive up and like log into my wireless and <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's oh, terrible. God. Oh, that's uh, terrible. Well, guys, thank you once again for being on, taking time out to be on the Game Packs podcast. A um, couple shout-outs for me personally. Um, our other co-host, Mike, is usually on the show, but he unfortunately wasn't be able, to, able to be on with us today. I can't believe he missed out with this episode, man. Uh, but he wanted me to tell uh, – he just sent me a message. He wanted me to tell you guys, thanks for making Super Meat Boy. You guys make some fucking badass games. Um, I have another shout-out. My girlfriend's a gamer, and she's a big fan of your Super Meat Boy game. And she wanted me to tell you guys, fuck you. You got your game is difficult, but she still loves you guys anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, but once thank you guys so much once again for taking time out to be on our show. And um, it's gonna be hard to top this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, tell yeah, tell us when it's up so we can link it or whatever. Well, it should be up. For, it should be up latest um tomorrow. Well, tomorrow for me, I guess tomorrow Absolutely. for you as well. Or today for you, maybe. Yeah. If you, want, if you want to top it, just get Andy Schatz on here. <laughs> yeah, get Andy Schatz. That, that'll be the next, this is what you do in the next interview. You get Andy Schatz on here, and then you secretly invite us in. <laughs> Have you got some I mean, stuff to say to him? I promise you, it will be the best podcast ever. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I'm down for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and go. And thank you very much for taking the time out of your out of your day and uh, to to I just talk with yeah. on here. And and uh, for those of you listening, be sure to check us out on Twitter at GameFactsP. I know it's kind of weird, right? <laughs> Fifteen character <laughs> limit. <laughs> but um, and then uh, also follow us on our Facebook page at uh, Facebook.com/slash/GameFactsPodcast. And guys, time to say goodbye. Bye. Bye. The, uh, You're not Tom Edmund. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you, everyone. Thank you.